There are many challenge runs on YouTube, but most of them are for little piss babies and their piss baby games. Follow New Vegas isn't on a Nintendo. Who would even play this garbage game if it's not on a Nintendo? Definitely not me. Today, I wanted a real challenge run, something nobody has ever been or even can beat. Throughout the years, there have been many games, and Super Mario World 2 Yoshi's Island is definitely one of them. Trust me, I've done the research. Super Mario World 2 Yoshi's Island was the first Mario game I ever played. Not Super Mario World 1 like I had asked my mom to buy me. No mom, they are not the same Mario game, you fake gamer girl. I've disassociated from her ever since, I can't forgive such heresy as a capital G gamer. But that is neither here nor there, Yoshi's Island is nevertheless a Mario game, much like I'm technically blood related to my mother. It's a platformer with eight worlds in which you fight against the evil Bowser at the end. Or at the very least, that's what we think happens in the game. You see, nobody has actually been the game before to find out what's at the end. I haven't been it as a kid. When I asked my friends on the schoolyard, they said, how did he get past the guards? The restraining order is still in effect. It's clear that nobody has ever been this game before, but just like how I'm not supposed to enter schools or public pools, just because someone tells me I can't do something, I'll try to do it regardless. So today, I want to find the answer to the age-old question, can you beat Super Mario World 2 Yoshi's Island? The game begins with some story of a stork delivering two babies named Mario and Luigi, which, personal speculation, I believe are actually Mario and Luigi from the titular game Mario and Sonic at the Olympic Games Rio 2016. A bit of a conspiracy theory, I'll link my 10 page twit longer on why I believe this, but I'll just let this image speak for itself. <laughs> Suddenly the stork drops the younger twin brother Luigi, and I'm already invested in this game because I'm also the younger twin brother, and I've also been dropped. It's a shame we don't get to play as Luigi in this game. Personally, I blame politics. See my second 10 page twit longer. Baby Mario falls out of the sky and onto Yoshi's back, which should kill them both instantly from the terminal velocity, but I guess Yoshi has plot armor in this cutscene. This game is already losing points with me. What were the developers thinking? My suspension of disbelief is shattered already. It is then up to Yoshi to find baby Luigi and return them to their parents. We enter the first stage when we're hit with our first problem of our challenge run. Yoshi is not moving. At first, I thought this was a glitch and I was already preparing to write a creepypasta about the game for internet cloud. I then found out that what we have to do is a hidden tech not known to most players. We first take our controller and then we have to press right on the d-pad. This is quite the technique to pull off and I practice it for a whole hour before moving on, just to make sure I get the basics right. This game is the Dark Souls of games called Super Mario World 2 Yoshi's Island. Luckily, we move forward, but not a moment after we run into our new problem. A pesky shy guy. There's no way to get past him by walking. It was at this point I was ready to give up. I already fashioned an origami noose out of my suicide note, just as a way to make my suicide less resource intensive. But I could not find anywhere to hang it, so I decided to continue on with the game. It may seem that we're at a loss, but really there is a way to beat this. What we have to do is a technique known as a jump. This technique takes an insane amount of dexterity to pull off, to the point where it may not even be humanly possible for some. First of all, you have to press the A button, but if we take a look at our controller, that just seems impossible. My hand is already over here pressing the d-pad. How can it be in two places at once? That is why we need a special grip on our controller, where we take one hand directly on the joystick and the other supporting our controller and a third hand to press the A button. Thank you. Now it's time to put our skills to the test and press the jump button to make it over. Okay, never mind. We do get to test our jump button prowess later in the level with the second shy guy. The ordeal shaving 10 years off my life from stress alone. But just as I think I'm in the clear, the game gives me this giant chasm to jump over, which is impossible. Or is it? The video still has three minutes left, so I shouldn't ask rhetorical questions. 
It is possible, but it is incredibly difficult. Instead of pressing the A button, we have to press it slightly longer. At this point, my fingertips had blistered over from practicing the jump tack, and to find out that there was a second part made me want to give up. I tried it and failed horribly. Well, not actually. I did press and hold the jump button, but even that didn't work. And what's worse is that the game softlocks you down here. I would have been stuck for hours if I hadn't found this secret platform, completely by accident. I'm not really sure how anyone would figure this out. It's so inconspicuous, even when you know where to hit it on a second run. What were the developers thinking? But I won't look a gift horse in the mouth. Trust me, they take that as a challenge. This time, I jump, but my finger rigor mortis is on the jump button. And I thought it was game over here, but as it turns out, the developers did not think anyone would keep holding the jump button for so long. And a glitch happens, where Yoshi double jumps. I knew if I was going to beat this game, I would need to take full use of this oversight by the developers. I was so happy. I was about to beat this stage when suddenly I got hit by these shy guys and Baby Mario got turned into a bubble. The game displayed some text, which I couldn't read because at this point I had been playing for 40 straight hours and my vision was reduced to a pinhole, and the wrinkles in my brain were smooth like a freshly ironed shirt. I knew I had to get Baby Mario back, but it was impossible. I tried nothing, and that wasn't working in the slightest. Then Child Protective Services came after 10 seconds and took Baby Mario away after I continually neglected him, which to be fair, is just like real life and my own baby. Wait, I have to go check on something real quick. Uh oh. I then had to repeat the entirety of the stage, my body weak with hunger, my mind ravished with my past failures, but I was determined to beat it at this point. And after another 40 hours, I managed to. But that's when something horrible happened. I discovered that this wasn't actually the first stage, it was the tutorial. And what was even worse was that there were 8 stages I had to do. It would be a long journey, but I had already sunk my life's work into this game. I was going to make it work. I continue on to the next stage, and while it's difficult requiring me to discover the tongue and egg throw tech, which got me stuck for another dozen hours each, I managed to get through it. I completed the stage and I move on to the next one, where we play as a pink Yoshi. If you ask me, I think it's really political of Nintendo just to add in all these different colored Yoshis for the sake of diversity. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm a proud capital G gamer, and it's not that I don't like other colors of Yoshis. I just don't want to see them in my video games, or ever. The second stage is even more difficult than the first, with the added problem you transform into a helicopter halfway through. But I managed to beat it, and I even get the special bonus stage from the flower we collected. Ah, oh, son of a bitch. And we get the special stage just like that. We then come across the boss, a giant burly guy that we have to knock his pants off and beat him. Which is weird, because usually in this situation my dad has his pants down and would already be beating me- Nope. I can't do it. Joke's gone too far. I'm done. He's beaten and we continue on. The other stages don't have too much to say about them, mainly because my computer lost storage from the hours of gameplay footage I had stored on it, and it didn't get saved to my Windows Movie Maker. Luckily, I deleted all my family's tax files for more room. We come across the seventh stage where there are enemies that cause hallucinations when touched, but will end in about 10 seconds, which is pretty loyal to how it works in real life. I've drunken all the juice under the sink with no permanent brain damage. All I lost was my sense of taste. See? No taste at all. Thankfully, this part is the easiest in the game. All you have to do is grab the shy guy in your tongue, jump up the plant, avoid all the shoot and cacti, spit out the shy guy, jump above him, flutter jump, make sure you get boosted from him by pressing A exactly when you land on him, flutter jump to get just enough height to jump on this flutter guy, immediately change direction so you can go over the screen and bypass this wall to keep flutter jumping in order to skip this part of the stage. I mean, there is technically an exploit where you can do this to go to the right after the plant, but I honestly don't get how the developers intended you to do that. I had to look up a wiki guide just to know that existed. Then I go to the next fortress, and the failsafe Nintendo goons put in to make sure nobody beats this game popped up. The fortress was filled with ghosts. I quickly shut off the game and finished my creepypasta about how this game was haunted and I bought it from a creepy old man. 
It takes an iron will to play this game this far, but then adding in ghosts to the mix? I would have shit and pissed and come from seeing the ghosts if not for the fact my body was dried hollow husk at this point. The developers didn't know what they were thinking. They won. And no, you can't beat Super Mario World 2, Yoshi's Island. Make sure to check in for the next challenge video, a little more casual than usual, where we beat the entirety of Dark Souls 3 with only fists.